We thank the uh, Peace and Equity Foundation for inviting us on your 10th anniversary. And we wish you our heartiest congratulations for a decade of addressing poverty and changing mindsets about poverty reduction. 10 years is a long enough time to be working on any single endeavor. But as we have seen in the context of poverty in our nation, 10 years is not nearly enough. I speak to you today as chairman of the Senate Committee on Agriculture and Food, where we have seen some of the lowest depths of poverty, especially rural poverty, in our country. When we speak of poverty, we are actually speaking of poverty. But the poorest of the poor would be the fisheries sector, and the poor majority are in the agriculture and rural areas. Many of our farmers and fisher folk remain the poorest of the poor. The average income of a farmer today is pegged at 23,000 pesos a year, or less than 2,000 pesos a month. No one in his right mind would say that this is decent. And this is something we have to address. It is also no wonder why the average age of our farmers today is 57 years old. I was in Sinaloa, Laguna a month ago, and when the farmer leaders came up to me and met with me on stage, five of them, one was 60, the other was 61 years old, the other was 71, the other was 74, and the eldest was 78. No one in the, or I wouldn't say no one, but the new generation of Filipinos don't want to go into farming, precisely because to go into farming is to have a vow of poverty. And this we should change, Igana. If our young people see no future in agriculture and developing the rural areas, there is no, there is no future for our nation. Yet the sector of agriculture and fisheries where, is where directly and indirectly over 60% of Philippine labor is employed. And nearly half of our GDP comes from agriculture directly, 18%. And if you include agro-industrial and agribusinesses, it can jump to as much as 50%. It is unthinkable that over the last 30 years, growth in this sector has been stuck at just over 3%, barely enough to cover our annual population growth. However, you look at it, however you look at it, in spite of advances in technology, it is apparent that we aren't moving ahead. We are, at best, simply running in place. Kaya naman po pala hindi po tayo maasenso. Mahigit sa kalahati ng ating ekonomiya ay hindi umuusat at tila napapabayaan. Clearly, agriculture and fisheries have been neglected for decades. This explains why, to my mind, we continue to lag behind our neighbors like Taiwan, Malaysia, South Korea, and Thailand, who have all zoomed past us. They focus on agriculture modernization and improving the quality of life of their farmers and fisher folk. We, on the other hand, made great public pronouncements. We are very, very good in making plans. Yet in effective implementation of these plans, we have fallen short. If we truly want to move ahead as a people and a nation, we will need to break out of this vicious cycle of mediocrity and impoverished performance. For the longest time, and I say this, the political and economic elite of our society have ignored or disregarded, disregarded the voices and the views of this significant number of our people who are weak. Some have gone to extreme lengths to keep the poor where they are. For as long as the acts of addressing rural poverty remain in the realm of tokenism, and without strategic long-term considerations, we will falter. For as long as the views and the welfare of the huge majority, or a huge significant number who are impoverished are ignored or disregarded, we can never become a strong nation. We can dream all we want about industry, about commerce, about financial institutions, or, or, or uh, the financial sector, but agriculture and fisheries remains the backbone of the Philippine economy. When the backbone is weak, the nation cannot stand. This is why we have been working hard to consolidate
the players and stakeholders around agriculture and fisheries and move the sector forward. In February of this year, agriculture and fisheries stakeholders from both the public and private sectors organized AF 2025, or Agriculture and Fisheries 2025, to craft a common roadmap and strategies, strategies rather, to take us to our desired direction. 60% of that summit came from the private sector, 30% from government, and 10% from the academia. Ultimately, it is the private sector that, that, with its muscle, with its capital, that will ensure sustainability of our efforts. We are also now working on an initiative called Sagip Saka, the Congressional Oversight Committee on Agricultural and Fisheries Modernization, of which I chair, together with the DA, DA are currently finalizing or coming up with the final touches of a program called Sagip Saka, an advocacy that aims to achieve sustainable modern agriculture and food security by transforming agriculture, farming communities to reach their full potential, improving farmers and fishers' quality of life, and bridging gaps through public-private partnerships. The six cornerstones of this advocacy are providing access to investment and credit, opening access to market, rolling out infrastructure, strengthening research and development, organizing farming communities and cooperatives, and ensuring the quality and consistency of supply. At present, we are committing 100 million pesos to pilot 25 agriculture communities throughout the country. And we wish to replicate this nation nationwide. And to sustain the funding source, we are currently working on a funding mechanism that will draw from the Agriculture and Competitive Enhan Enhancement Fund, or ASEF, as well as the PPP in Agriculture, or the Private Public Partnership Fund in Agriculture. At the heart of Sagip Saka is to drive, is the drive rather, to bring farmers and fisher folk out of poverty and to give them the respect that their profession so deserve, with the belief that empowering our agriculture sector will financial, with financial stability and disposable Ill income will make a huge impact on our economy. When this 60 or almost 70 percent of our labor force afford to live better lives, they will spend more for food, for housing, for transportation, for education, for basic necessities, and even some luxuries. Imagine the impact on consumption and spending. Imagine how much more money will flow around and pave the way for the creation of more jobs. The possibilities are tremendous. Sa Thailand po, ang number one vehicle of choice ay ang 4 by 4 the vehicle. They have the largest number of 4x4 four four vehicles uh, proportionate to their population in the whole world. And the farmers are buying these 4x4s. Four Bakit sa atin, ay sabi nga po nila, ni hindi makabili ng kalabaw ang ating mga magsasaka. Isipin po natin kung tumaas ang kinikita na na ng ating magsasaka at ating mga isda ay yung mga processing zone at itong mga uh, techno parks dito po sa may Laguna, dito po sa may Cavite, ay eh, pakaho, hindi na po nila alam kung paano po nila pupunuhin ang demand. We need to wake up to the reality that we are still, by and large, an agriculture economy. And unless we address the obstacles that hinder the boom in agriculture and fisheries, we will be deluding ourselves into thinking that we can reach developed nation status in a decade and a half. But where do we begin? Sagip Saka hopes to build model farming communities. We were in Thailand a month ago, a 15 hectare uh, farming community enterprise netted 10 million baht in 2010. 32 farming families, four products, basil, sweet basil, morning glory or kangkong, and uh, asparagus. The uh, export company that deals with this farming community, it is a community enterprise of farmers, donated a uh, air conditioned packing facility at, so uh, at, at the source, at the farm itself. They train the farmers and the fisher folk. The farm manager had to go through two days of workshop and actual testing to, to ensure that the, 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 the standards remain very high. The Department of Agriculture in there in Thailand has the uh